Hear that shrieking? That is the sound of the bush stone curlew. A shrieking call. And as these birds are nocturnal, the calls can be heard all through the night. And if there is a group of stone curlews, they will go into a chorus. Bush stone curlews have long legs. Their common posture is standing, as you can see here with the young. But other times, they will crouch on their legs, flexing them under the body as they roost. But in their fight and flight response, they are different. They rarely fly when disturbed. More usually, they go into a statuesque standing position or play dead, lying on the ground. Juvenile birds like this have heavy streaking over the chest. Here for a size comparison, you can see the pigeons running around this bushstone curlew. There are two morphologies to the bushstone curlew, but these are not separate subspecies as there is no geographic isolation. Bushstone curlews were initially classified as being waders. They are found more in coastal regions, but they do extend into the dry arid areas of Australia, usually in close proximity to wet areas. They like grasslands. However, the highest density of bushstone curlews is towards the coast, particularly in the tropics. And it is one of the birds that has adapted well to coastal parklands. They are shy birds, often found more in the shadows and under shrubs. When they are disturbed, they go into this still-like posture. Sometimes they will lie on the ground and you may not even see them. I've put an arrow on this frame so you can look at the bottom right hand corner and see the bush stone just taking on a deceased posture. I mentioned about the bush stone curlews adapting to the parks in urban areas and here at Cairns, on the Esplanade foreshore parks, you can see the group behaviour of these birds. There were approximately nine of these birds, but then I noticed walking along the coast, approximately a kilometre away, there was another flock of another eight birds. So the flocking nature of these birds seems to take place in the non-breeding season. Bushstone curlews with their long legs are often grouped with the waders. But there are differences. Firstly, the foot structure. They only have three toes not the four radial toes of the Artiidae that are really geared up to walk on soft mud. Here on these mud flats, it's a little unusual to see bushstone curlews as they are more grassland birds, but it is great for photography. As the bird moves and opens its wings, if you look at the tips of the wings, there is a dark and a white area at the distal wing. In flight, these birds can be distinguished from the Australian bustard by this white on the outer wing. This contrasting wingtip is also present in the beach stone curlew but with slightly different patch positions. They do go inland, but are never too far from water. The bushstone curlew eats mostly insects, but here on the mudflats they will eat worms and crustaceans as well. But in essence, they are carnivorous birds. What we are watching now is at approximately five o'clock in the morning. It's that twilight light, so there is a little bit of blur and jitter. But I was lucky to get these bush stones out on the mudflats. It's more usual that they are in the grasslands. But here we can photograph and get a good view of how these birds behave. I have found them early in the morning. They have probably been out here most of the night, as they are largely nocturnal, roosting during the day. They call bush stone curlews. Remember that the curlew just stands for the call and the bush stone, because when they're lying on the ground, they often resemble a stone. Here again, you can see the flock nature of these birds. It is a very loose relationship, but when they come together during the day, they will often roost in close proximity. The family name for the stone curlews is Berhinidae, from the Greek ber for ox, and rhinus for nose or bill, implying that these birds have a large bill. And the species name for the bush stone curlew is Grellarius, meaning stilt-like or long-legged. But the stone curlews are not related 
to the eastern curlew, a wader that breeds in the northern hemisphere and then spends considerable time in Australia. There are 10 stone curlews throughout the world, and two of these are found in Australia, the beach stone and the bush stone curlew. When it comes to nesting for the bush stone curlew, they just, like many waders, lay their eggs on the ground. And here you can see the bird just making sure a few leaves are around about. The egg, like the bird, is stone coloured and the leaves add more camouflage. The beach stone curlew, bathing in a freshwater outflow in tropical Queensland at the beach. In the background you can see the aerial mangrove shoots. And these birds, if not on a sandbar, the dry mud flats or the intertidal areas are hidden in the mangroves. The wood swallows aren't too happy with them being in that area and they keep swooping on them. I think the wood swallows regard them a little bit like predators. Thinking back to the bush stone curlew, you can see the bill of a beach stone curlew is large, hence its species name Magnirostris. The bush stone curlew had matchstick legs, but now this beach stone curlew is far more solid in the bill, the body and the legs. And you can see why sometimes it is referred to as the thick knee. They are a quieter bird than the bush stone curlew, having more of a classical tweet bird call calling to one another as they go looking for crabs along the beach. And the call is biphasic and of less amplitude than that of the bush stone curlew. <coughs> The beach stone curlew is a fast walker. They only have three toes, different than the egrets and herons or the Ardeidae, which have four radial toes, three pointing forwards and one back. The hallux or great toe in this bird is very vestigial, a small knob at the rear of the foot. So being a heavier bird when they walk on mud, they can sink in, preferring firmer mud flats for foraging for crustacea. So they are found more on intertidal foreshore and sand banks, even going on rocky foreshore. Apart from good feeding grounds, their only other requirement is proximity to mangroves, for this is where they will roost, hide and breed. The bush stone is a carnivore which eats most things that move. The beach stone curlew is far more interested in crustaceans, so he spends a lot of time wading along the shoreline. 
more saltwater shorelines than freshwater shorelines, so he is found around coastal Australia. The prized food for the beachstone curlew is the crab. Beachstone curlew is again in the family Burhinidae and it belongs to the genus Essicus. And this bird is found from Southeast Asia going through the Malay Peninsula, Indonesia, PNG and Australia. There is a second species within this genus with variation in the bill for it is upwardly curved, hence the name Recurvi rostris and this bird is found only in Southern Asia. So let's keep looking at the bird found in Australia, Magni rostra with its big bill made for chewing up crab. Again, the beach stone has three forward toes. The genus name Essicus is derived from ancient Greek mythology and means a water bird. In the Greek myths, Essicus is the son of Priam, who was the king of Troy. He had several other sons, Hector and Paris, were two of the stepbrothers to Essicus. In the mythology, the king was killed by Achilles. And Essicus also had a miserable demise. He was so distressed at the death of his wife that he threw himself into the river. But the gods took pity and he came back as a water bird. And so this name has now been given to the beach stone curlew. On the sandbar, there are many crabs, the favourite food of a beachstone curlew. But why this bird runs long distance to catch a specific soldier crab, I do not know, when there are so many in the immediate proximity. Unlike the bushstone curlew, the beachstone feeds more during the day, and it seems very vision dependent. And I suspect the crabs that these birds eat are different in some ways. Either they are in molt with less chitin or loss of the carapace, or something else that makes them more tasty. For instance, carrying eggs. I am uncertain of the exact reason. To finish with the stone curlews, I would just like to show these birds in flight. The beach stone and the bush stone curlew have dark contrasting areas at the distal wing on the external surface. And this helps to distinguish it from the busted that looks very similar in flight, both of them having extended necks. But the busted does not have the contrasting colour to the distal wing. On behalf of the Plumes of Oz, thank you for watching this video. If you would like notification of further releases of Australian birds in the wild, hit the subscribe button.